Welcome to this session of Xcode in the Playground. We're going to be having a look at random numbers today. Our learning objectives today is generating a random number, looking at the random number structure, having a look at the range in random numbers. We're going to have a look at generating random integers, random floats, and also random Boolean results. And we'll finish the presentation today looking at creating random elements from lists. So let's get underway and open up a new project in the Xcode Playground. Okay, now that you've got a new project open in the Playground, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything out of here. And put in a developer comment, like developer, and put your name in. This is a good habit to get into when you are coding, especially at school. So let's start by having a look at the random number structure. So let's declare a variable, let's go let, and we'll declare a variable dice. And this dice is going to be equal to an integer, because a dice can only be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. You can have larger size dice, or smaller ones, like a 1, 2, 3 for a spinner, but it will always result in integer a whole number. You don't roll a dice for 7.5. Now once we declare the integer, we then want to call on the random method. This is found in the maths module of the computer, but we're going to call on random, and you can then see what the ranges are or the parameters that you can pass to the random method. We're just going to pass the in one, and then the closed integer range. So we're going to pass in in, and then we're going to set the parameters for the range. Because we're rolling a dice, I'm just going to keep it simple from one through to six. Now it's very important that you have the three dots in here. This is the start number and the end number. So it will generate a random number between one and six. It will include one and include six. Then what we can do is print out dice. So when the program runs, I'm gonna run the program automatically. You can see in the inspector that three has occurred. So let's talk about the range. The range is here. So I'm just gonna put a comment in above. So this is the type of random number. In this case, it's an integer. We know it's got a random, and then we have over here a range. It has a start and stop. So think of them like bookends. I want to start and include one and stop and end at six. We can then also declare different parameters. So we can go let dice one equal to another integer and it's going to be a random. So I'm calling the random method and in the close range this time I want to be one and it has to be less than six. So in this case here, it will pick numbers between 1 all the way up to 5.99999, but it will not be 6. It will be less than 6. You can see that more occurring when we use something like a float. When we use a float, you can see now we've got 1.111092. We run the number again, you get 1.8. Also 5.98669. So it won't ever get to six, but we'll pick numbers between one and 5.99999. We can also declare a random Boolean. So let's go let light is on. And we're gonna declare this as a Boolean and a random. So this will result a true or a false. At the moment, it is true that the light is on. And we can run the program again and have false that the light is on. So this can be good for flipping a coin where you can have a heads for true and tails for false. Now the last random function we want to have a look at is if we want to get a random element from a list. So let's declare a list. So let's go let rewards and that's going to be equal to a list of items. So we could have things like gold, silver, iron, 
and clay. So you could be playing an adventure quest game, and depending on what happens when they destroy a boss, break an item, or you know, um, open up a, a barrel, crack a chest, find a money bag on the ground, you could give them one of these random objects. To do that, we can then declare a variable like loot, and that's going to be equal to rewards. And then what we want to do is get a random element from that list. So you can see on our output, so you can see on our output, gold, silver, iron, and clay are allocated to the rewards list. So gold is separated by the comma, that makes an element, which is a string element. We could just have a number there, we separated by a comma, and then that number would be an element. So it picks a random element, one of these four items, and places that in the loot. Now, if I go print loot, you can see that an error occurs. You see an optional bracket silver has come back, even though the loot silver was put into loot, when we print it out, we've got this optional issue occurring. Now the reason for that is the random element has a return that enforces that a null value will not be returned. So provide a default value to avoid this warning. So what happens is it doesn't want to get a blank list sent back to loot to print. So to stop that from occurring, if you put an explanation mark on the end here, when the program runs now, you can see that gold's returned, gold is outputted, and we've lost the optional output here that's stored in loot. So just remember if you are picking from an element list, that you use this explanation mark to help ensure that a blank list is not returned to loot. So in this session of Xcode in the Playground, we've looked at random numbers, the structure of a random number, we've looked at the ranges, the start and the stop, We've looked at generating a random integer, a random float, and a random boolean of true and false. And we've also looked at getting random elements from the list. So I hope you found this session of Xcode in the Playground useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful programming tutorials. And I look forward to seeing you in the next session of Xcode in the Playground.